This is a HeadGum Podcast. date me it's a podcast where i try to figure out why nobody wants to date me it's very sad uh but also very curious and interesting and my guest today is a lady who's super super fucking funny i've known her for years we used to perform together in new york and she's wonderful joanna bradley Hello. Hi, hi, hi. I, I wish How we are could you? Run at each other and hug each other when you do that. See, that would be nice if we could touch each other. But you're in New York and I'm in LA and we mm-hmm. are G chatting this podcast, mm-hmm. which is very exciting and it was very high tech and. Uh, honestly, I don't really know how it was done. There was HDMI cables involved. Yeah, no, I can see you on the webcam. You're covered in cables. I'm just, it's like I'm you're in wrapped, a pit of snakes. Wrapped in cables. And I'm just hoping one of them will bite me so I can feel something. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Okay. It sounds very <laughs> sad. So, Joanna, you, you're married, right? Yeah. How did you do that? How did I do that? Yes. Oh, it's really fucking easy to get married. The government wants you to, so <laughs> <laughs> any idiot can get married. But um, how did you find your wife? How'd I bag the bitch? Yes, how'd you bag that bitch? <laughs> um, you know, what's funny is, uh, I don't know, we knew each other for like a year, and I was like dating someone else, kind of on and off, mm-hmm. um, but always in the back of my mind knowing that like, that Kate, uh, my girlfriend was like, v- like extremely intriguing to me, and it took like a few months to get out of that other relationship, and then obviously after that, a few months of just like us hanging out. But I, I really don't know how I did it. I think like <laughs> <laughs> I, I always say to her like, uh, I just needed to get on like one date with you because I'm really good in a room. So <laughs> I just like <laughs> like she's an audition and you're winning over the casting director. I'm really good in the room as long as you like get me in person. Yeah, I felt like it was like a general. Like I was like I'm really good at generals. Like just get me on a couch with a water bottle. Um but yeah, it was like a bar with a few beers and yeah, by the end of the night I was like, "Oh, I got this." And and here we are 4 years later. 4 so. years, dang. So, how long did you date before you decided to pull the trigger and get married? We dated, like, I guess by the time we got married, we were, like, a year and a half into dating, Mm -hmm. which sounds very fast. But I don't know. It wasn't, like, we didn't have, like, a proposal or any of that kind of junky stuff. We just had, like, several conversations about marriage and, like, the (laughs) tax benefits and the insurance (laughs) benefits and all those incentives that the American government provides you. (laughs) Um, and we just, it was like a very grown up conversation and we talked about it probably from like, I don't know, like August until like November, we just had a lot of conversations and then finally decided to pull the trigger. So we did it like the day after Christmas in 2014 at like city hall. So you didn't have a wedding ceremony. There was no dresses, no tuxedos. (laughs) I mean, we did get dressed up for city hall and, uh, yeah, like we both looked nice. Like she had a dress on and I had on like some cheap uh like <laughs> dinner dinner blazer. Okay. But we later had like we did have like a party mm-hmm. later, maybe a, almost a year later, but I don't know, that also wasn't a wedding either. There was no ceremony. It was just like our friends kind mm-hmm. of giving like toasts and like a big like a lot of food and booze. You know? That's nice. How come you opted to not go a wedding route? How come you didn't want to be like a bridezilla? Um, 
I mean, you remember what I look like, right? Can you imagine me being a bride anything? Um, well, I don't know. I think a bride can wear a tuxedo. And you looked so fucking good when you went to the Emmys. Ooh, baby, I saw that tux you were wearing. You had sunglasses <laughs> on. Your hair was flowing. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, I can rock a tuxedo. You just have to get it altered for a, a, a five foot four woman's body. But yeah. <laughs> was that a men's tuxedo? or? Yeah, it was a men's. It was Tom Sweeney, Ooh. if you know men's designers. Ooh, Tom um, Sweeney. Yeah, it was a pretty penny. And then getting it altered, I went to this, like, maybe gay guy down in Lower East Side, this, like, gay Latin guy who was just like, oh, you're going to look so good in this. Oh, yes. Oh. <laughs> and I was like, all right. <laughs> he was right. He told the future. Yeah, he knew what he was doing. Here's a question. Uh, we, we, what? Yeah, go ahead. You say it. No, well, I was just going to say we were both, like, pretty anti-wedding. That's mm-hmm. why we, like, didn't want to do a wedding because, you know, they're so gay and lame and gross. Fair. Fair. I kind of want a wedding, but I also don't think I'm ever going to get married. So I don't actually know what I want. Here's a question. Did you do online dating at all? No, I never did that. I mean, I think when I was still dating, it wasn't quite what it is now. Everybody does it now. It's like Mm -hmm. not even embarrassing. It's like, (laughs) oh, yeah, we met online. It's normal. No, it's still embarrassing. I did once fuck uh, someone from Craigslist. Oh, tell me about that. (laughs) <laughs> that was way that was like maybe 10 years ago so i was very young um i was like right out of college it was maybe it was like 2008 mm-hmm. and it was like a drunken night like um i went on i was just like went on craigslist you know how they used to have, i don't even know if they still have these like personal ads basically they still and do i went on they still have them. they do <laughs> oh <laughs> they knows. do Oh, they do. She knows. <laughs> I peruse them sometimes trying to find someone normal, and there's no normal people on Craigslist. No, of course not. <laughs> oh, my God. It was not a normal experience. It was it was pretty upsetting. But, yeah, <laughs> it, it, there was, like, a one-night stand, and, oh, I mean, all I can say is, like, the night began with, like, a ton of drinking. Mm-hmm. And so, then- wait, so you – contacted this person on craigslist and you were like let's go out for drinks mm, i saw this person on craigslist and this person like wanted to like fuck oh, it was okay. like it wasn't about dating it was like do you want to fuck uh-huh um so we met like the next night maybe um and yeah we met at like a shitty bar in soho and then got i remember like we drank a lot of the bar and then she was like oh, let's get like a six pack and go up to my place. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, we are, we just drank like a hundred beers, but okay. <laughs> She's like, I guess six really more, come on. I'm out for this experience. <laughs> <laughs> so we went up to her place uh, uptown and, um, and I don't know, it was one of those apartments, like she made a lot of money and she lived alone, but it was one of those apartments that's like, I can tell this costs a lot of money, but there's no, like, there's nothing, there's no, there's no on the wall. warmth or There's heart no, to it. Yeah, it's just like a big empty space with like a huge 50-inch like TV and like a bed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like, okay, you have a weird life. And I, I don't know, <laughs> we had sex. And then at the end of the sex, uh, she was like, she had like a bit of a, like an emotional, not breakdown, but like an emotional Did she situation. Cry? She, I guess she was crying. I guess she oh, was no. crying. Yeah, I guess she was crying, but she was kind of like holding on to me and like shaking at the same time. Oh, I don't know. It was, yeah, it wasn't a great. Needless to say, I never did it again. <laughs> That's <laughs> terrifying. So you're like in your early 20s. This woman was how old? I was like 22. I guess she was probably like almost 30. Oh my God. And she just makes money, meets people on Craigslist, fucks them, and then cries herself to sleep? Yeah, that's what happened. Oh, boy. Yeah, that is that's what happened. That's awful. Did you leave? Or did you say, yes. sure? <laughs> How did you get out of there? What did you say? I, she, I let her stop crying. And then I think, like, she got herself together. And she, like, went to the bathroom. And when she was in the bathroom, I was like, I got all my clothes on really fast. And then I was uh-huh. like, I got to bounce. It was, like, 5.30 in the morning. The Fair. sun was coming up. And I was like. I should go home. I can't stay with this crying woman any longer. That's... Yeah, I mean, I felt bad, but also, like, we don't know each other. It's not my responsibility. No, day. you don't owe that woman anything. That's so funny, though. I can't imagine crying with a stranger. But I guess that's how you do it. You don't do it with people you know. 
You find someone you don't so. know and just start sobbing and be like, I have a lot of problems. Can I talk to you about it? <laughs> yeah, Ugh. exactly. That's perfect. That's I haven't had weird... anyone cry, yeah. but I've I've had really? that. Really? You've no. never had someone cry? No, I've never had anyone huh. cry. But I've had like people overstay their welcome where I'm like, oh, you have to leave my house now. Please, please get out. Like one night stands who don't understand that yes. it's a one night stand. I had one guy, it was like a one night stand. We like hooked up and then my roommate was watching TV and then he was like, oh, what's on the TV? And I was like, nothing for your eyes. Can you please leave? <laughs> and then he like sat down and was like, oh, I know who Amy Poehler is. Cause I think we were watching sisters or something. And I was like, how old was this guy? Uh, I think he was like in his thirties. But he okay. wasn't like a comedy person. He was just some trick off twin, uh, Tinder. And he just didn't understand that I had no desire to ever speak to him for longer than we had spoken. Also, his dick won great. So it's like, get out of my house. Can I ask you something? Yes. W- what is a dick that, su- what do you mean? Is like, you, like he couldn't <laughs> fuck you right? Or do you mean literally it was like shaped stupid? <laughs> it wasn't shaped stupid, but like it was on the smaller side and then he like didn't eat me out or like he like didn't finger me well so like it was a shitty dick but then he also didn't do anything to compensate for having a shitty dick i see so you're sort of using shitty dick as sort of like a metonymy is that like the thing that stands in for yes you mean that as a euphemism the whole for the experience was very bad have you are you a gold star lesbian no i'm not unfortunately <laughs> I only say I'm not, oh. unfortunately, just meaning like it would be cool to be one. Not that my experiences with men were so horrific. They were just, you know, very It's boring not what you wanted. It's not what I wanted. Yeah. Which is a fair Like ordering assessment. a big meal and being like, I don't want this. Like, I don't want any of this fucking food. I which has happened before. stick any of this in me. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to stick any of these french fries mm-hmm. in me. They're all hard and nasty right. looking. Okay, mm-hmm. I sent mm-hmm. you um, uh, my Tinder profile. Can you look at it? Yes. Yeah, I, I looked at it for a second. Let me see here. So the first picture of you I'm looking at is you're holding like a two foot dildo. Yes. Okay. That's my first picture. And do you think that's a good picture, a bad picture, or are you indifferent to it? No one could be indifferent to you holding an iridescent <laughs> dildo the size of a fucking fire hydrant. Um, no, I think, here's what I think about this picture. I think, like, it's very you. There's, like, even the background, super colorful. I think it says pow behind mm-hmm. you. And it's you looking, like, sassy, very pretty. The makeup's on point, as usual, blah, oh, blah, blah. Thank you, thank You're you. You're very well uh, put together, as you know. Um I mean, I will say it's it's very Nicole, uh, you know, mm-hmm. it's, I guess what I would say is looking at all these pictures, they're all like, a, they're pretty much all a similar vibe, right? Uh-huh. Which is like, fun, party, yes, sassy, sexy, <laughs> like, don't stop, uh, you know, like, celebrate. <laughs> fucking fun times don't stop celebrate Whatever. fun times oh, these are all yeah, words that like I'm there's into. no there's never a, a picture with you like holding a cup of tea in your hand <laughs> you know fair yeah i don't think i'm a tea drinking kind of lady but would you say that the pictures are a good rep- representation of me yes but remember like i only know you like to this to a certain to a certain level i don't know like intimate pajamas no makeup nicole so yes i would say absolutely fair you look like an incredibly fun funny like confident cool girl so i think that's generally a good impression do you think i need a picture of myself in pajamas with no makeup holding a cup of tea to be like sometimes (laughs) i wind down (laughs) not if it doesn't feel truthful to you i mean i don't know do you ever wind down Have you ever in your life wound down? (laughs) Honestly. Have you ever just like flopped onto the couch and like watched a baking show without lipstick on? Uh, I would say very rarely. I am usually (laughs) in full makeup. Uh, Yeah. If I like 
I usually stay in bed if I'm going to not be in makeup. I don't want people to see me without my face on, which is an insane <laughs> I thing. Know. It's very crazy. My roommates will see me without I don't think makeup it's crazy. On. You don't think it's crazy that I like to be in full makeup? Okay. And what do your roommates do when they see you without – do they scream and – do they no, scream and jump off the balcony or what's John going on? John has never screamed, ah! but sometimes my titties will be swinging and he doesn't like that. Well, last time my titties were swinging, I did climb on top of him and asked him to kiss me and he didn't like that. Uh, because okay, I- so you assaulted him and he was against that? Okay. <laughs> yep, yep. I'm always trying to just assault John. He doesn't like that. I mean, look, your your little profile blurb here, it says, always trying to have fun. Like, literally always. Oh, that's There's never my... a time when I'm not trying to have fun. That's Bumble. On Tinder. Oh, that's Bumble. Yes. Tinder says, I got Might a be. fat ass. If you're not into it, bye-bye emoji. And then a lady just being like, whatever. And then it says, I right. like people with a sense of humor because life's too fucking long not to laugh. DTF, down to figure skate or fuck or farm or fly a kite, whichever's easier. Uh, see, I... Can I tell you something? Mm-hmm. I read that before DTF down to figure skater, fuck, farm, fly kite. And I was like, yeah, I could see Nicole figure skating and fucking. I am curious if there's a side of Nicole who has ever done anything like farm or fly a kite. <laughs> uh, I think the closest I've ever gotten to farming is I went to the Gentle Barn, which is an animal sanctuary, and I pet cows. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that's, that's the closest I've ever gotten to like planting seeds in the earth. Right. And that's not right, even planting. Right. That was just petting animals. I mean, you don't have to do that shit at all. I'm just like, I am like, I think I get your flavor, but I always wonder about you. Like, is that just your most prominent flavor? And you have these other flavors that you only show to like certain people. Fair. I guess I could share my flavors, all of my flavors. But then again, I guess I don't know what all of my flavors are. Maybe this podcast is revealing that I don't know who I am (laughs) other than a performer who's fun. I mean, you do perform a lot. I do. That is a thing. So much. I know. All the time. And you're great at it. Hey, thank you. But okay, that's a good note to be a little bit more... I feel like this is a constant note that I get to be a little bit more vulnerable. Uh Uh-huh. Is that what you think? Just a little bit. I mean, look, again, like, I would never tell you how to be. Mm -hmm. It feels fucked up to tell someone to be more vulnerable on their fucking dating profile where everyone's just lying probably anyway, (laughs) right? Fair. But I think that's a good. But it's, it's something that I would say, like, someone looking at your profile would be like, I don't know. Like, can this girl go to another place with me? Or will she always vibrate on this one frequency? Fair. I do try when I meet people to not be as funny on a first date (laughs) or like as quippy or like do bits. I try to be like, because I'm trying right now to not date comedians. I'm trying to date like normal people. So I try to just be like, hello, I'm Nicole. <laughs> and not uh-huh. like, hi, it's me, Nicole. So I'm, I'm trying. Uh, man, it breaks my heart, though, to hear you say that you try to be less funny. Because <laughs> I'm like, that's a fucking waste. Well, I would never want you to swallow a quip. Oh, well, thank you. But you're also a comedian. You do comedy. So, like, you understand bits and sarcasm. Sometimes men don't. I was talking to this guy. We talked for a long, long time before we decided to go out. And he would say the craziest things. And I'd be like, wait, what? And he'd go, oh, just kidding. And I was like, oh, that's not a joke. There is no (laughs) hint of sarcasm or whimsy. You're just saying these weird things. And then he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know how to do jokes. And I was like, well, I'll teach you. (laughs) So then I I taught him joke structure. And then he stopped texting me back. (laughs) So, you taught him joke structure? Yes. I was like, well, if you're going to tell a joke, you have to set up the premise, and then you have the joke, and then maybe a twist and a punch, or, <laughs> you, or you could do a misdirect, <laughs> <laughs> where you say something and then it means something else, and he, he, I guess, did not like that. Of course he didn't like that. He fucking sucks. <laughs> yeah, he, he did. He fucking sucks. He did suck. He Whoa, just, like, dude, did it. Makes, I was like, these jokes are terrible. 
And then he would just... He was just saying insane shit and saying, just kidding. Mm-hmm. What a dumbass. Yeah, I did not enjoy him. But I was, like, gonna go out with him. Oh, wait, one thing he said... Oh, so he had terrible pictures on his profile. So I was like, do you mind sending me a picture of yourself? And he was like, do you want... He was like, only if I could send you a naked ones. And I was like, no need for that. And he was like, just kidding. And I was like, that's not a joke because right. you were, I think you wanted to send me a naked picture and I don't need that. And he's like, no, I was kidding. You sent me pictures. And I was like, no, I'm not sending you any pictures because my profile has all of the pictures you ever need of me, full body shots, face shots. And then he was like, then he made a, he tried to make a joke about how I was critiquing him. And I was like, well, that's not a joke, but also I am critiquing you. So you don't have to make a joke about it. <laughs> So maybe I was the asshole. I don't know. Wait, is all of this transpired before you agreed to go on a date with him? Yes. So much oh, happened fire. before we were like, all right, let's go out. And then I told him joke structure and then he stopped texting me. Oh, uh, that, I mean, that sounds like a fucking nightmare from the beginning. And I kind of, I'm kind of like, was, would, would, did his picture turn out to be really hot or something? Why did you agree to go on a date with him after he acted like such a, dick his picture was not great he did not seem very attractive he also seemed like he had a shitty personality but i'm opening my mind and i'm trying not to say no because sometimes most of the time this is not true maybe sometimes people are better in person they never are i just i think i'm just in a spot where i'm desperate um <laughs> i just want someone to love me honestly uh -huh. and that's it yeah, can I can I point something out real quick? Not to be yes. a fucking therapist. No, you can. But as soon as as soon as you veer into your explanation about why you're opening your mind and you're saying I just want someone to love me and I'm desperate, <laughs> you realize that you do it in suddenly like Nicole performer voice and you're doing it all jokey. Uh huh. Oh, I know it's a hard thing to say and shit, but mm -hmm. I just want you to notice that like it's a very predictable pattern with you. As soon as you're saying something that is as you said, vulnerable, you're like, I just want someone to love me. What are you, Liza Minnelli over there? <laughs> you sound insane. Elijah with a Z. Yes, my mother Judy. And I guess, yeah, I guess I could stop. Okay, I would like someone to I don't care. I'm just pointing me. it out. It's a I good don't care thing how to you be say it. I'm pointed just point out. Saying. I think it's good. I think you're the <sighs> second person to say that I have, I have walls up. So... Who said that? This guy named Casey. Uh, he said that I had some walls up because I told him I didn't want to cuddle when we slept together. Uh, hmm. Because to me, cuddling is way more intimate than sex. Yes, and it is. I, at that stage in my life, was not not there and I couldn't do it. But now I'm working on cuddling with my therapist. <laughs> Wait, you and your therapist cuddle? No. <laughs> 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 yes, me and Mary... Uh, my session is I talk for 10 minutes and then we spend 45 minutes just <laughs> spooning each other and we alternate between big spoon and little spoon. And then she'll <laughs> gently kiss me on the forehead after our session and go, you did good, my little sparrow. And then I drive home and I go, what am I paying for? No, we talk about cuddling and talk about intimacy and how I have issues with that. I mean, I, I would love to say like, oh, really? But all of this feels like, uh-huh. Mm, yep. 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 <laughs> yep. Seems about right. Yeah. Oh boy. I also sent you Bumble messages. Yes. Can we let me look at those? So on Bumble, I've had some pretty, pretty uh, unsatisfying uh, responses. Nobody wants to respond to me on Bumble, and the whole thing about Bumble is you match, and then the woman initiates, and then the men talk back. But then it's like, well, why did you match with me if you had no intentions of ever talking back? It's not Tinder. You don't have to just swipe through everybody. But anyway. Right, right. So, <clears throat> like, here's the thing. These are all, like, your opening lines are, they're, I think they're fucking great. They're all Thank funny. Thank you. Right? I'm trying. They're all really funny. Uh, I just think fucking men are sexist and so they're i mean at least these dudes are because they don't want women to be funny i guess they want you to open with like hi i really liked your profile picture <laughs> or some shit <laughs> hi i'm really nervous um <laughs> i don't know what the fuck they want you to say but all your shit is the equivalent of like you know that 
now famous like Aziz Master of None thing that apparently mm-hmm. men are actually ripping off on Bumble and Twitter and shit or oh, Tinder. What is that? I don't even know what that is. It's like in his most recent season, he has this. He ha- his opener on Tinder is he says to girls, uh, "Hey, I'm going to Whole Foods. Want me to pick you up anything?" Which is like very cute and like disarming. It's like a funny little joke. Um, oh. And now apparently real men are actually ripping it off. But I'm like, okay, so this is equivalently like all your shit is equivalently like adorable and like and funny. But men don't respond to women who are funny. I guess not. I guess. Well, this is one I said to Maddox. Maddox is a cool name and you dress pretty cool too. Is this a cool first message? Nothing. I mean, like, I would think that's so adorable. If a, right? if a woman immediately had, like, a sense of humor and her first message to me, I'd be like, that's, you're so cute. Right? That's what I think. Okay. As if I said, okay, so as if two quick questions, the barrier hugging in the first picture, did it kill you? Are you a ghost? I thought that was very funny because he's literally hugging a real bear in his picture. Uh, like a dangerous. real bear? It was a very real looking bear. Well, that's, Nothing. that's so dangerous. Right? And then I was like, yeah, not everyone can't be asking him about that bear. And if he's a ghost because that bear killed him, that's a funny place I went to. Also, he's the one who decided to put up a picture of him hugging a bear. So obviously he wants people to comment on it. Right? That's what I thought. But then nothing. So then Jonah, Jonah had a picture of himself on a motorcycle. So I said, Jonah, hi, hello. Two questions. Would you teach me to ride a motorcycle? And how many other women have asked that? Because Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm sure other people have asked. So let's talk about that. Nothing. So... What do you think? Like, I also noticed because I've never been on Bumble, but I noticed at the bottom of this, it says he has 24 hours to respond. Yes. So Bumble so, puts a like a time clock on it. So you message someone on Bumble. They have 24 hours to respond. If they don't respond within the 24 hours, your connection goes away. But you have to like. Is that pro- possibly like the deal with any of these that. Like some of these dudes are just like not seeing, like not seeing this shit fast enough. It might be that they're not seeing it fast enough, but then also it might just be they're like not into it. But then it's just like, so why did you swipe on me? Maybe because men are all about like that numbers game. Oh, I guess so. You know, it's they very... be swiping with abandon. I sometimes swipe with abandon. It's it strikes me you do everything with abandon. It strikes <laughs> me that like that if I was a man and I was on an app that didn't put me in control that might frustrate me so i would just like swipe 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 and then wait for the women to reach out to me and then and then make my choice put the power back in my own exactly. oh how annoying yeah. here's another what's another good one that i wrote oh i wrote how about this, this guy who responded to you this billy guy okay so billy i said quick question is that black child in your picture yours or borrowed he said whoa he's brown and he's my son so i said cool 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 i'm glad that got cleared up otherwise it could have gotten real awkward (laughs) and that's (laughs) the only response i've gotten on bumble is i offended this man and his child it looked like a little black kid but why did he get so pissed and go whoa he's brown (laughs) i have no idea but I He was just like, don't call my kid black, he's brown. I guess his kid is mixed because he's Fucking not black. Colorist. I guess. I it was very confusing to me as to why he had that reaction. And I was being cute because sometimes people have pictures in their in their profile and be like, Oh, it's my niece, it's my nephew, or it's my cousin, right. or whatever. So I was like, Is it yours or borrowed? Which is like to right, make that your was profile your, like- cuter. Is like a cute way of you being like, Oh, is that your son? Like, do you mm-hmm. have a child? Yeah, because um, that's a big that's like a big thing to date someone who has a kid. I think so. And then um, nowhere in his profile was he like, this is my son, uh, whatever. He's like four. I I thought I was being cute, but apparently I was being offensive. And these people have very thin skin. I guess so. I don't know. This is one that's like just inoffensive. 
So this man was like, I like activities, which is a very broad thing to say on a dating profile. So I said, what other activities do you like? Bowling? I have a hankering for bowling right now, which I do. I really want to go bowling. I haven't been bowling in years. That's good, right? Yeah. I mean, I mean you know, it's very straightforward. <sighs> um, I want to just clarify that that Billy guy, that's the one time that you, or whoever yes. that guy was, that's the one time you've ever gotten a response on Bumble? Yes. On Bumble, I Bumble just Bumble does send, not work for you. Bumble does not work for me. I guess me initiating doesn't work because all the conversations I have on Tinder are male initiated or female. Whoever I match with, they, they respond to me first or they like reach out I first see. with me. I see. And I so you for some your openers are not working. My openers are not working, and I've tried to be like, okay, maybe I won't make a joke in the beginning, but then I don't know how to. I don't know what to say to people in the beginning if it's not like, here, I'll make you chuckle for a second, and then we can have a normal conversation. I think that's really uh, that's a good strategy dating wise, and I think it's like a lot of men's strategy and it works for men really consistently i also just want to say though that is very interesting personally if we're taking you out of the like just the anonymous dating thing and mm -hmm. just says nicole the person i know it's interesting to hear you say i don't know what to say to people if i don't make them laugh first oh i guess that's like a thing <laughs> I, that's fine i'm a comedian too mm -hmm. i probably do the same things you know, I yes, I make a lot of jokes like on dates and stuff, and it works for me. But I don't know. I do think you have a particular um, like comfort zone in yes. that area. But here's okay. So if I go, "How's your day?" Isn't that the most boring thing you can ask somebody? And I feel yep. like that is consistently the thing that is asked of me. How is your day? And I'm like, do you really want to know? I know you're just trying to start a conversation, but like, why not start it with something interesting? Or like, a yeah, that always strikes me as a stupid question because it's like, that's something you ask like your girlfriend when she comes home. Yeah. Not a stranger. Not a stranger. I'm not going on the subway going, excuse me, how's your day? You, you feel like this person's <laughs> insane. I don't want to tell them how my yeah. day... Get the fuck out of my face. Ugh. Yeah. Maybe I'll start with how's your day going? I mean, it might be, like, definitely it's stupid and it sounds boring to me, but it might just be less intimidating for regular people. Maybe. It might get you more dates if that's what you want. On the other hand, like, you could just keep doing what you're doing and you'll get fewer responses, but maybe you'll only get responses from people who are cool. It'll just take longer. Maybe. I don't have time. I'm getting older. <laughs> okay, let's take a break. And when we come back, Joanna, we're going to talk about how we hooked up. Okay, here's the time in the podcast where I reveal that we've hooked up. Ooh, baby, we fucked. It was delightful. Let's see, if I remember correctly, where were we? Okay, so we were at a party at that apartment that, remember, like, Ben Warheit and oh, John Trowbridge yes, and, like, yes, all those yes. other boys? Like, on, like, It had that, like, janky something. piano. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was, like, this big party at their house that had, like, you know, seven bedrooms and one bathroom with, like, pubic hairs all over it. <laughs> uh-huh. I remember that. And this was, like, four years ago. Yes. And you were in town for Girl Code. Yes. I saw you at the party. We were talking, talking, talking. Mm -hmm. Then there was like a vibe. And I was like, huh, Nicole Byer's giving me a vibe. And yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. okay. This was September 12th, four years ago. Because mm -hmm. I emailed you on September 12th of this year. And you said, we fucked exactly four years ago today. And I was so uh -huh. pleased that you remembered the date. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to say it sounds. If I remembered the day that I fucked you, it sounds a little bit like I'm obsessed with you and like I have a, like I have a collage of your face. Uh, Honestly, in my, in, I would in my love bedroom. that. <laughs> I would be so pleased. <laughs> but I knew. No, I just. I have a very good memory, and I knew that it was early September. And then I remembered that there was this email from that night that we both looked at together. So I looked up that email. Ah. Um, 
But yeah, we were at that party. You were giving me a vibe. Then we like went downstairs to smoke a cigarette, maybe. Mm-hmm. And then you were like, I think you were like, so what's the deal? You want to like, do you want to like come back? Because we were flirting pretty hard. And mm-hmm. you were like, do you want to come back to my hotel? And I was like, sure. And then I remember that I made a joke about like, oh, ha ha, like, because uh, you're like on TV now. Like, oh, they put you up in some hotel because you're on TV now. And you said, you better not be fucking me just because I'm famous. <laughs> and <laughs> I laughed and went, you're not that famous. <laughs> How awful. This is funny. <laughs> I've been talking to set, like people that I've hooked up with, and they're like, oh, you said this awful thing. And I'm like, cool. I'm a literal monster sometimes. But to be fair, I was pretty drunk. Awful. That is awful to be like, you better not be fucking me because I'm famous. <laughs> Although I love that you were like, mm, you're not that famous. And <laughs> guess mean... what? You're right. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, you're more famous now than you were then. Oh, um, barely. But also, you know, I wasn't really your audience. I was like, I'm sure you're super famous with 16-year-old girls. 16-year-old but... girls do like me, and they like to tell me yeah. that they grew up watching me, which makes me feel so old, because I was like, it was only four years ago I started doing <laughs> anything on television. So we go to the hotel. But you were a breakout star. So then we go back to the hotel, which was... <laughs> which was uh, I told John... Millheiser, it reminded me of because he was there. Remember, we he saw was him there, like, and I think he took a, a cab uptown with us. And then I said, "You have to go away," and he said, "Why?" And I said, "Get out, go, <laughs> get out of here." He had to take the cab to wherever he went, and he scurried off to some mm-hmm. other 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 abode. Um, yeah, the hotel was like <laughs> it was so corny. It looked like when you get on like a Virgin America flight and they have that purple like lighting and that yep. stupid music. It was the it was Dream like that. Hotel. That's what it's called? The Dream Hotel, yeah, on 54th, I think. Well, or fuck you, Dream Hotel. You're uh, fucking corny. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, it made, per- I remember thinking like, oh, it makes perfect sense that MTV is putting you up here. This is such a fucking like Viacom style. <laughs> They Joint. loved the it's dream. Like, I stayed at the dream to the point where, like, I should have had my own room. And then sometimes <laughs> they would just put me in the same room. They'd be like, your room's ready. And I was like, this room has no <laughs> windows. I don't want it to be my room. But <laughs> Do you realize that, like, you're probably the only person who, or one of the only people who frequented the dream hotel to the point <laughs> where, like, they probably, when you came in, they probably treated you like a VIP. They were like, oh, Nicole Byers is here. They did. They once printed out a picture of my dog from Instagram and put it in a frame and put it next to the bed. And I was like, that's oh. creepy. It wasn't even a good picture no. of my dog. It was a picture of him wet, <laughs> like getting shampooed. <laughs> and I was like, why did you do this? This is so bizarre to me. But that's That the was dream. like the Dream Hotel's very cheap way of giving you like extra as a guest but they're not like a five-star hotel so all they can do is print out <laughs> a fucking something picture from for instagram i mean it was wild and then i told them it was creepy and then they apologized and i was like well you don't have to apologize it's fine and then someone <laughs> took it away and i was like you didn't have to take it away it was, it was a whole thing uh so then we went to the dream we fucked it was delightful and then afterwards i think i emailed you and was like thank you for the sex <laughs> No. I think I, I did. Think you did? I truly think really? I emailed you and was like, thank you very much for the sex. Oh, I wish I had pulled up this email because I'm 100% sure that's what I sent you. Let's see if I can find it. Well, I can look through my email because I probably have like six emails from you ever. So I'm sure it's in there. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. I did. September 19. So like maybe a week later. Yeah, I said... You did subject line, and then the body says, <laughs> you licking my pussy. Yep, I, meant I enjoyed to send this a while you ago. licking my pussy. <laughs> I meant to send this a while I ago. I meant to send this a while ago. Oh, and, and you gave me... responded to you. Oh, <laughs> you said, I too enjoyed the sex. Looks like you wrote this at 9 a.m., mm-hmm. your time. So I'd like mm-hmm. to imagine you thanking me for licking your pussy with someone in the middle of your Wednesday to-do list. Buy paper clips, call DMV, thank Joanna for licking your pussy. <laughs> Buy more makeup with glitter in it. Feed Charlie. That's my dog. You're the best. Also, there's nothing more satisfying than doing it with you than laughing at you about something. Great. Uh-huh. This is... <laughs> 
I, this is a wild thing. Like, has anyone ever emailed you after hooking up to say thank you? Um, sure. Oh, really? So I'm not weird? <laughs> no, I think that's a normal thing to do. Yeah, I've oh. had, I've had uh, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Well, here's a yeah. question. How come you didn't date me? <laughs> oh, God. Isn't that an awful question? No, I don't think it's an awful question, but I think it, what's implicit in it is like this erroneous assumption that it's all in my control <laughs> as though like you were somehow trying to date me. <laughs> First of all, you had ju just moved to LA. You like, mm -hmm. lived in LA, completely different life for me. Also remember we like didn't know each other that well. This is also a consistent thing in my life where I just hook up with people that I'm friendly with and don't get to know them first. Which is not a bad way to start. Yeah, I mean, we never really got to know each other. I remember you telling me that night that you had seen me, like, when I was first on Mod Night, which was, like, 2011. Mm -hmm. And that you'd seen me on Mod Night and been like, ooh, that girl's super cute. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Yep. So to me, I'm like, all right. Why didn't you hit me up in 2011? You know what? I don't know. I think, oh, actually, I do know. Because up until recently, I did not hit on people or pursue people unless I was drunk or had a weird scheming plan. What's a scheming plan? So Will Hines, I wanted to make out with him. So I, <laughs> at a party, was drunk. And I told Keisha to ask him if he liked black women just to put it in his mind that a black woman was asking about him so then when later i was like let's make out he would be like oh that's the black woman like just weird shit that i do i don't ever do anything the way normal people do it where they're like oh i like this person i'll pursue them i'm always like i have to wait hide in the shadows put together a plan and then i'll pounce <laughs> no i think most people do what you do they just lie about it everyone's really bad at asking each other out Wait, I, so you had Keisha go up to Will and say, do you mm -hmm. like black women? Yes. Don't you think he maybe thought she was hitting on him? No, because Keisha is always in a relationship. Right. So it would have been either right. me or Sashir she was, that she was talking about. And then I think Will just assumed it was me the way I wanted him to assume it was me. I don't know. The whole thing really worked out the way I wanted it. Now you and Will are married, right? Now Will and I are married. No. We're not. And I had him on the podcast and I asked him why he wouldn't date me. And he said that he just didn't feel that spark. And I was like, fair. Truly, that's wow, fair. Wow, that's honest. Everyone's been like super honest. Okay, here, I'll, get, I'll be real with you. Let me okay. be real with you. Well, there's some things that were not in your control. Like you were like one of the last people I slept with before me and Kate got serious. Like you, when, when you and I slept together, Kate and I had maybe been on like three dates. Mm-hmm. So, and we, you know, really liked each other. Um, and it was maybe like, maybe like a month and a half after you and I slept together that Kate and I were like, whoa, we love each other. We're together. And, uh, you know, I haven't looked back since, obviously. Mm -hmm. So there's that to contend with, which is like, you know, I was already cultivating this thing that I was like, holy shit, this is going to trump everything that I've ever had. So it's kind of like the, in like high fidelity when he calls, you know, asking about his ninth grade girlfriend mm -hmm. and he's like, why'd she dump me for Kevin? And then he finds out that she married Kevin mm -hmm. and he's like, oh, I never had a chance. It wasn't about me. They were meant to be together. So there's that. Uh huh. But also like, I remember, I think probably most of the time that you sleep with somebody that a person sleeps with somebody, you probably for even like a second entertain the idea of like, huh, what would this be like if we followed this to its natural conclusion? Mm -hmm. So I certainly like that thought passed through my mind that night and maybe like the next day, like, huh, like Nicole Byer, what the fuck? Cause you're not a random one night stand. You're like a person I was friendly with. But I remember like maybe not even being able to articulate this, but having this instinct that like, you you are you're like a candid person you're like you're forthcoming about i remember you talked to me that night about like 
your life and some stuff about like your family and shit. Mm -hmm. So like you are forthcoming with information, but I still always got the sense that you were like a rookie where intimacy is concerned. Ah. I could like feel that. And I remember thinking like, oh man, like I know this and I I can kind of feel what stage you're at. I don't mean that to sound condescending, but I no. can feel like where 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 you were at in terms of how ready you are to like open yourself up to somebody actually. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I think we are in two very different spots because I was like a a very I was a very advanced player. Sure. Honestly, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And was, I don't know if that's still true for you, but I would say that was the sense I am, that I got. If 10 was like super ready to be like intimate with someone and like ready to like really throw myself into a relationship, I'm probably at like a six and a half. I haven't advanced that's good. <laughs> that much in the last four years, but I am trying. I know you are. I know you are. I also, by the way, like this is not meant as a criticism. Like everyone needs to go at their own pace and, you know, I... I t- I can think of a hundred reasons why you would be a little slower on the uptake intimacy wise. Not a hundred, like five. Okay. Um, I just think like, you know, I also think you and I are both performers or both comedians, but like we approach comedy very differently. We've always had a very different relationship to our comedic personas. And so I don't know. I think it gets, it could get hard and complicated. Also you are a little bit famous. That does make things complicated. I don't know if that's ever in the back of your mind, but I don't have to deal with that. When I meet people, I'm like, oh, either you like me or you don't like me. I don't have to think about, like, you know, is there some ulterior motive? Mm -hmm. Well, when I – the way I go about it is I just assume that a man or a woman, if they're talking to me, doesn't know who I am uh, until they tell me. So I just – try to just be me until someone's like, oh, I know your comedy. And then sometimes the first message from someone will be like, oh, I think you're super funny and I'll go thank you. And then the conversation ends and I'm like, cool. So you just match with me to tell me that you like me and then you don't want to do anything else? (laughs) All right, fine. You're just a fan. Yeah. Yeah, like Aaron Jackson used to post these things on the internet of they were like grinder exchanges that he had (laughs) where people would be like, hey, I loved fucking identical twins. And he'd be like, thanks. (laughs) (laughs) yeah it gets me very weird when someone's like oh i like this about you oh i have no intentions of ever following through with this and you're like cool i don't know why we wasted each other's time can i ask you something else yes are you like are you dating women uh not like i'm not dating women but i'm not like the door's not closed to that i don't consider myself like incredibly straight i think i'm fluid sexually i like sleeping with women i like sleeping with men uh and then i have both men and women on my like dating profiles because like Mm -hmm. if i connect with a woman i'm not gonna be like oh i'm not gonna go out with you because you're a lady it's like well i don't know (laughs) it might be in the stars that that's who i end up with Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so yeah yeah i like the ladies you're very open i i yeah love is a very interesting thing and i try not to close doors to it Intimacy, on the other hand, I keep that door slightly ajar, but pretty much closed. Well, it's eking. It's eking open. I'm trying. Let me ask you one more thing. Yes. Okay. If you kept evolving and things worked out with somebody, like, can you paint me a picture of what it would look like? Uh, Like, what's your ideal of what it would look like a couple years from now and you're in this great relationship? What's your Saturday morning? Oh, boy. No one, I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. Okay, so my Saturday morning, if I'm in a relationship with someone and I'm in town, I guess I'd like to wake up and say, excuse me, can you fuck me? Thank you. (laughs) And then we fuck and then we have coffee and then, like, we leave our house and do something. I don't Mm -hmm. know. I don't know what couples do. I've never been in, like, a real nice long relationship. You got it. You nailed it. That's what that's what couples do. I mean, that's what good couples. I mean, that's what happy couples do. Yeah. Yeah, I think that. Would, but also, here's a weird thing. I like cannot imagine someone moving in with me, and then I cannot imagine having to like <laughs> text or call someone every day. 
That sounds so invasive. <laughs> like my space. I would like someone who oh, is very busy and like puts me on the back burner. So like when I do it to them, it's okay. Maybe I'm not ready for a relationship. That sounds awful. It doesn't sound awful. Why does that sound awful? That I want someone you're to be for like, what you're ready for. to put me on the back burner sometimes. Well, that's what you can handle right now. You're also, how many hours a week do you work, Nicole? A lot. A lot. Uh, you're this a lot. week, you're- uh, seven days. Next week will only be five, though. Ugh. I mean, yeah, dude. I mean, it might just be something that you need to, like, slowly work toward because it's, Man, you're trying to build a fucking brand right now. <laughs> trying you know? very, very hard. <sighs> trying very hard. Yes, and you're having a lot of success, but like, yeah, that can, that shit is, it's hard to do both at the same time. It is. You Joanna, know? we have to wrap this up. I want to thank you so much for doing this. Do you have anything Thanks that you want to plug? Ugh, no. No? I don't want to talk about my work. Well, no. do you have shows that you want to plug? At the Upright Citizens Brigade Theater where you perform? I mean, sometimes I perform on Saturday nights with my improv team, GOAT. But, uh, you know, that's just a little fun mess around. <laughs> that's the UCB Theater in New York. Mm-hmm. It is what time? That's at, uh, at, that's at 9 on Saturdays. At 9 on Saturdays. She's very funny. I think you should go. And if mm-hmm. you like this podcast, you can rate it five stars. And in the comments, you can hit on me. And if you say something awful enough, I'll read it out loud on the podcast. Here's an example. This man on Tinder, Michael, said, Let's not wait forever. You need to come get a spanking on your big, beautiful behind, girl. Or, like Jerry said, I want to take off your clothes. Um, let's see. What's another one? Uh, this man who I matched with on tinder whose name is why said let's fuck tonight so he cut straight to the point so get creative anything you want to say uh i'll read the best (laughs) ones out loud when i do the podcast thank you so much for listening thank you joanna so much bye 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 That was a HeadGum Podcast.